All right, before I let you go, I want you to tell me, you pick your starting five, all-time starting five. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to be in it. Okay? Okay. I'm not going to I'm not going to be in it. Okay, my all-time starting uh, uh my all-time uh starting five. Yep. I would like I, I got to have I got to have uh Will Chamberlain mm-hmm. as my center. I got to have John Stockton as my point guard. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got to have LeBron James as I'm going to put LeBron James. I'm going to put LeBron James at my power forward position. Okay? He's going to be a tough matchup. <laughs> what you laughing at? Okay, what, I like what, it. What, what, I like what, it. What, Keep going. Okay. Now, I got to put uh I got to put uh Oscar Robertson. I got to put Oscar Robertson. Oh god. I got to put Oscar Robertson at my uh two guard. At my at my two guard. And who's your other and guy? Now, uh, my, my other guy, I would have to go with my other guy. I would have to put um, – that's the two guard. I need a three-man. Yeah. I'm going to shock the world. I have to put Scottie Pippen wow. as my three-man. Okay, now let me tell you why. Oh, I got to hurry, I though, because I, I got to go. Okay, I know you got to go. Scottie Pippen led the team in every statistical category when he was there without Michael Jordan. Yeah. That's why I got to put Scottie Pippen. So now you know. You got a man crush on Scottie Pippen? Uh, I just like Scottie P- Pippen. I got a man <laughs> crush on LeBron James. Okay. <laughs> All right. I want you to come and visit me, and I and I'd love to have you in studio. You could co-host with me if it ever you know you ever cross paths. We'd love to have you. Oh, I would love to. And uh, hey, make sure everybody listens to the Dan Packer Show. I love it. Thank you, Carl. Great to talk to you. All right. Hi, buddy. That's uh, Carl Malone. A five-time NBA champion, a rival, and friend of Michael Jordan, the one and only Irvin Magic Johnson is with me right now. I can't leave out the teammate on a 1992 original Olympic dream team. Let me not forget that. Magic, let's get right into it. You saw that reaction from Michael Jordan. What was the immediate thought in your mind at that particular moment when you saw that? Well, I was happy for Michael because... Michael doesn't show his emotion a lot in public. So you can tell that he was so into this documentary. He was into his own story about himself. And also, I think, you know, it it, it even touched him to be able to touch all these people to know that millions are watching each and every Sunday didn't hold anything back. He didn't hold anything back, Magic, but when you saw those emotions, I know when I saw those emotions, I was thinking about all the noise that he probably felt in his mind was going to be made about how tyrannical he was about winning. You were somebody that was a bit tyrannical about winning. You once demanded to be traded from the Los Angeles Lakers because you were not having fun any longer. And then the late Dr. Buss, God rest his soul, made moves, and you enjoyed the next decade of your career. When you look at Michael Jordan and with those reactions, did you get the sense at all that he was thinking about how people would misconstrue his leadership? Exactly, and how they would perceive him. First of all, the man is a great, great winner. And and to allow people to understand how he won. See, he let you into his winning mentality, his winning mindset. He didn't care about your feelings as a teammate in terms of when we in between those lines. He cared about that you understood that mentally and physically you had to be tough and on top of your game. Do you believe MJ when he says it's hard for him to consider himself the greatest of all time? Is that the MJ you know? Oh, yeah, because Michael is not going to talk about himself. He's not going to say, hey, I'm the greatest player that's ever lived. That's not who he is. He's never been like that. But he let his game speak for itself. You know, he he don't have to say that. It's guys like myself, it's fans who would say that. And he bagged it up with how he practiced, how he approached the game, and then how he played the game, both physically and mentally. And then when you take account that he never lost in the NBA Finals, oh, my goodness, that's amazing. And look at his scoring average and his percentage that he shot from the floor in those series, too. It's Mm. it's just truly amazing. So many times we sit around today and we compare MJ to obviously the greatest in the world today in a lot of people's eyes in LeBron James. What do you feel about those comparisons specifically? Well, first of all, let's not take anything away from LeBron James 
because LeBron James is a great basketball player, one of the all-time greatest that's ever played the game. LeBron James, to me, when you think about all-around basketball player, he probably is the best of all time, right? An all-around basketball player. But when you want to say who's the greatest ever, it's still Michael Jordan. Now, LeBron James' chapter is not closed yet, right? He still has some basketball to play. So maybe he has a chance to catch him later on if he can get some more ch championships under his belt. But at the end of the day, they're both great, and they played the game the right way. They made their teammates better. They've won championships. And thank God for LeBron, because right now, that's what we're watching. We're watching LeBron mm -hmm. James. This is his time. This is his era. And he's dominating this era and in his LeBron James. <sighs> It doesn't stop, folks. Uh, the four-time NBA champion is also a four-time MVP, a four-time NBA Finals MVP, winning a fifth NBA championship would tie him with the likes of Magic Johnson and the late, great Kobe Bean Bryant. Max, you're up first. Would a fifth NBA title give LeBron GOAT status? I'm talking MJ, Michael Jordan, his airness GOAT status. No. LeBron's already got the career argument. It's either him or Kareem. And I think for in the pros, in the NBA, considering how LeBron's still playing at his age, it's LeBron. Peak is Jordan. And I don't see where LeBron's going to elevate his peak over Jordan's. When we talk about greatest, guys, I don't think we just mean add up all the win shares by the end of the career and who's worth more wins, right? I don't think that's what we're talking about mainly. Nor do I think it's just a guy who had one season. Oh, my God, he was all world. He was as good as anyone I've ever seen, Bill Walton or something. I don't think that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a guy who's prime, who concentrated the highest level of performance over a significant number of years. When they were at their best, like, and how, how long did their best last? That's the best basketball ever played, right? So in baseball, if you said who's the greatest pitcher ever, you have a very good argument for Sandy Koufax. He only had four prime years, but one after another. No one ever did it like that. I think we we, that's really what we're talking about when we say the best who ever did it in sports. And Michael Jordan's prime. Guys, the first time, the first time Jordan played with another All-Star was Scottie Pippen. He took the Pistons seven games. Pippen had a migraine in game seven, scored two points in 40 minutes, so they lost. He never didn't win the finals again in under seven games. Understand? Every time you gave, here, Jordan, here's an All-Star. He won the finals in under seven games and put up numbers the likes we've never seen, right? And was an all-world defender. He's the greatest of all time. I don't think LeBron can catch him. Well, Max, you're just moving the goalposts for your narrative again. You can't just say, come up with that logic and say, this is why he's the greatest of all time. Maybe LeBron James is still going. He's still at his best. Even at the age of 36, he's still at his best. And here's the problem that I have. When we talk about the game of basketball, last time I checked, the game of basketball was a team sport. This is not boxing. This is not golf. This is not tennis. Where rings and championships define your legacy. Yeah, it helps your legacy, but it don't define your greatness. How about the individual accolades? Because you could be on a team that just don't have the pieces, and you could be doing more than your part, which LeBron James has been doing his entire career. And I didn't even want to get into this GOAT debate because I already know you two old haters. I know how y'all act. Oh, no, it's nothing that he could do. Not a damn thing. I'm just waiting for you, Stephen. I can't even see you today because I don't even have my monitor on. Matter of fact, I don't even want to see your face right now. But at the end of the day, I said this again. I said this Smiling before, ear ear. and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. LeBron James and Michael Jordan are sitting at the same dinner table. Some people like to drink, uh, drink Ciroc. Others like to drink Hennessy. I'm a Hennessy type guy. I'm a Hennessy dude. I'm a Hennessy dude. That's, that's, that's fair enough. And, and listen, stop lying, because you always love to see my face. Just stop lying. Stop lying, big boy. Stop lying. That's number one. Number two, you are absolutely right. There's nothing that's going to change my mind. To me, Michael Jordan is the greatest of all time, but him and LeBron James sitting at the same table. LeBron James is on the Mount Rushmore of basketball, one of the top four players in the history of basketball. There is no question about that. And, and, and listen, God forbid I don't say that LeBron is number one. I mean, what the greatest insult in the planet because some of the folks in this camp, that's how they treat it. Him number two instead of number one, what blasphemy are you spewing? But I think it's something to be said about the road that you traveled to get there. 
I think that the year, the things that my, the LeBron had to endure before he ultimately got to that point psychologically, mentally, emotionally, I think there's something to be said for that. I'm thinking about the scoring championships of Michael Jordan, the NBA championships of Michael Jordan, the killer instinct that was Michael Jordan. Uh, all of those things come into consideration for me. And so when I look at LeBron, it's no disrespect whatsoever. I think he's the greatest in the game today. I think he's the greatest in the history of basketball outside of Michael Jordan. But if I had to take LeBron at his best, and I don't hold him all those championship losses against him, even though he lost six. I don't I don't blame him for losing to the Spurs in 2007. Not I don't all blame him for losing for the Spurs in 2014. I don't blame him for losing to KD I mean, and Golden State. I understand what he was working against. But in the end, all I'm saying is when I take LeBron at his best and I take Michael Jordan at his best, I would want Michael Jordan every day and twice on Sunday. Only, I mean, over LeBron James. And that is the only person that I would want over LeBron James in the history of basketball. I don't find that to be insulting. Stephen A's right, Perk. I mean, I mean, Bron on, I mean only Bron, Bron had to go against more Hall of Famers, but carry on, you good. Go ahead, Max. You can talk about, you can talk, you can use that argument. I can use, I can use, hold on, Max. I can use the culture of the game today compared to what it was in the 80s and stuff like that. The roughhouse tactics, the rules, how soft it's become over the years. I can bring that up. We can have that argument another time, KP. We can do that. You do not want to go there. You do not want to go to the Hall of Fame. You do not want to go there. I'm so you don't sick of the competition because argument. Because I'm telling That's you, you don't want to, you don't want to bring up, you don't want to bring up John Hunter second and Thunder Dan again, and LeBron facing KD and, oh, and, and Kawhi. We ain't gonna Perk. go there. You I'm right? About you that. right? We ain't gonna go there. You right? I ain't gonna bring up. That's what I'm talking about. Thunder Dan, you right? That's what I'm talking about. I'm yeah. talking you, about you, basketball I'm in the '80s. Good. I'm talking about basketball in the 80s. Don't act like you don't know. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So you, so There's you a mean whole bunch of catching so purpose so with no soft as Forget about rules basketball as on in the, the defensive 80s. side of the ball. Don't no, start that. I can't. Please. It, you don't, need, you don't need to give, you don't need to you give Jordan extra credit. You don't need to give Jordan extra credit for that. Don't give Jordan 